I want to uh, talk to you about uh, the demonic tonight. Um, I read the Bible for uh, years, and, I, and I, I noticed in the Gospels, on uh, every other page in the Gospels, there are demons, right? And, and they interrupt church services, and, and uh, uh, Jesus will cast them out. They do things to people, uh, but they have to submit to the Lord Jesus. And uh, that was on every other page of the Gospels. And uh, I was a pastor and a seminary professor, but I never saw a demon. <laughs> I think our kids uh, uh, see evil, uh, uh, and, and then parents uh, say, oh, no, that's nothing. You know, a uh, young girl comes in and says, Mommy, there's a bad man in my room, and, and, and Daddy or Mommy go, no, there's not a bad man in your room. They might actually be seeing evil. My children, uh, my youngest, my daughter Elise, and my second-born son Scott could both see angels and see uh, demons at a very uh, early age. Uh, it, was, it, it was kind of amazing. And, at, and when I was at the vineyard, a number of kids were, uh, y- young kids, were really good at seeing uh, angels and also seeing demonic powers. Sometimes we'd have kids sitting over there, over there, over there, and they would all see the exact same angelic presence standing behind John Wimber as he was preaching. And they would describe the exact same person. And they weren't sitting together. Um, and then they could also see... Uh, uh, evil. Once I was uh, sitting in my living room and I, there was something that I was praying really hard about asking the Lord to show me and I was just begging him, I was, please show me if this is the right thing to do and I would made up my mind I was going to uh, do it and I was just saying let me know if this is right Lord and my uh, daughter just, I was in the house by myself and my daughter burst in through the front door and she goes Dad, there's lights all around you and that's the way she saw angels. She saw them as light. Sometimes she saw them as like uh, beings. But that was like the Lord answering, hey, this is, what you want to do is right. It, it's, it has angelic presence uh, uh, with it. Um, Christianity is supposed to be supernatural. I mean, it, 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 and I didn't experience the stuff I'm talking to you about now. When I was a seminary professor, I experienced none of this. I, I, I didn't believe it. I wasn't pursuing it, uh, and I didn't have any friends who talked about it. But once I started believing in the supernatural, uh, God started sending people in my life who could hear him, uh, who uh, had amazing healing gifts, and and who had had encounters with with, uh, angelic beings. Um, It it really is a supernatural life. Um, But here's the bad news. It's not nearly as supernatural as we want it to be, right? (laughs) Somebody said, how much supernatural, does, how many miracles, how much supernatural does, does uh, God do in your life? And I go, not enough. Um, you know, there's uh, always want more. Um, it, uh, it, it's n- not going to be all the time. Sometimes uh, the very thing we want the most, he's not going to give us. He's going to give us grace to endure. And giving us grace to endure brings him honor. So and that's the most important thing. Um, it's whether it's the miracle we're asking for or whether it's grace to endure, the most important thing is that we uh, honor him. Okay, uh, a, uh, idol- idolatry is obvious a uh, way to, to come under a demonic influence. 1 Corinthians 10.20, Paul says, The sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons, not to God, and I do not want you to be participants with demons. Uh, so... Uh, so idolatry uh, is a way to open ourselves up to, uh, uh, to, to evil powers. And uh, Colossians 3.5 says this, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earth, earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. So what is greed, really? It's just making a god out of money, right? And so greed is a way that can open us up to uh, demonic influence. And then uh, the last biblical inroad, the seventh one, is blasphemy, where we're saying unholy things about a holy person. This is 1 Timothy 1.20, where Paul says, Among them are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. Um, So their blasphemy got them handed over to the power of Satan. Now there is a uh, a uh, 
another thing I think that opens us up to Satan, but I don't have any scripture for it, and I think it's drugs. Uh, I, I have cast demons out of people uh, that, that they, the demons probably got there through their use of drugs. Because when we take drugs, we're surrendering the control of our mind. And when we give up the control of our mind or the control of our bodies, there's something else there waiting to take uh, control. And I think one of the reasons that, that um, the use of drugs is so widespread is Satan is really promoting it because it gives him influence over people, especially over our young people. This is what took my son Scott out. Um, he, he found drugs in our church parking lot when he was 12, started with marijuana, and uh, he said to me, uh, Dad, marijuana just relaxes me, and it's, it's not a gateway drug. It doesn't lead to anything. Uh, that's a lie. Everybody on heroin started with uh, marijuana. And it puts you with a class of people who are also promoting uh, drugs. And he started with uh, marijuana, but he ended up trying it all. And on his last night on the earth, he mixed uh, five things, none of which are lethal by themselves, but together they form a lethal cocktail. And, uh, and he ended up going out of his mind and uh, took his life in our home on December 27th, uh, 2000 in Whitefish, Montana, and uh, we, got, we, uh, we uh, gathered around his, I found him the next morning at 8.30, we gathered around his body and laid hands on him, I held his head in my hand and we, in hands, and we prayed for him to come back uh, to life, and we said we're going to pray for God to give us Scott back until God gives Scott back, or until the police come and make us uh, leave, uh, and after about 30 minutes, the police came and Make us, made us leave, and we were just plunged into this darker and more unforgiveness world than I'd ever known about uh, before, and it was through drugs. And, and the lies to our kids are that uh, this is not going to lead to something uh, worse. Uh, th uh, th this just relaxes you. This is okay, and it's not okay. Uh, getting in that culture can open us up to uh, really, really bad things. I know some people escape. Uh, we weren't, uh, that, that, that we didn't escape. Uh, we ended up uh, suffering under that. So, seven demonic inroads in Scripture, probably drugs, which is not mentioned in, in Scripture. If we do those things in a prolonged way, we're going to, uh, we'll, we'll probably end up under some kind of demonic influence. And the, the good news is, though, as we pray for the sick, there's going to be more and more power coming into our lives, coming into the life of our churches, and we'll have power to set uh, people free from demonic influence. Jesus set people free. The apostles set people free. No one's afraid of them. We want to think of uh, demonic influence, and people say, well, Christians can't be demonized. Oh, yes, they can. What, what, if, if we give ourselves over to a, a demonic practice uh, or, to a, or, or to demonic influence, they can actually have influence uh, over us. What, what we obey is what has influence over us. It's not the same thing as saying uh, a Christian is possessed. It's, it's saying that Christians can be influenced if we give ourselves over to evil.